Hello and welcome to beatingdyslexia.com. In this video we're going to be looking at the different types of dyslexia. Now if you're watching this video it's probably because you're wondering what type of dyslexia you have. However, before we start, I think it's worth noting that it is not easy to subdivide dyslexia as there is so much variation between symptoms of each individual case. So please don't try and pigeonhole yourself into one of these categories. I think it's a much better idea to consider your dyslexia in terms of how your individual symptoms personally affect you. Okay, let's jump straight in then. Now, the balance theory suggests that there are three types of dyslexia. Number one, perceptual or P-type. These dyslexic people read quite slowly, a sort of sound by sound type of reading. This group seems to be stuck in the early stages of reading development unable to gain speed or fluency. The name perceptual is due to the full processing of the perceptual characteristics of each word when reading. Number two, linguistic or L type. These dyslexic people try to read quickly but make many mistakes. They attempt to use linguistic strategies to read faster than they're able to. This is why they are called linguistic or L-type dyslexics. Number three, mixed or M-type. These dyslexic people are a mixture of the first two types. They read very slowly while making lots of mistakes. Links to the research evidence that these types are based on can be found at the bottom of this web page. OK, moving on then. The phonological theory suggests that there are two main types of dyslexia. Number one, phonological dyslexia. It is thought that roughly 75% of the dyslexic population fall into this category. The theory suggests that people with phonological dyslexia have a difficulty dividing and blending the smallest units of speech sound, the phonemes. Number two, surface dyslexia. Now, this is not a phonological problem it's a difficulty applying the syntax or the rules of language. For example, a person with surface dyslexia may pronounce the word castle, cast, le. Again, the links to the research evidence for these subtypes can be found at the bottom of this web page. Finally then, it's also very common for dyslexic people to be categorised in terms of auditory or visual problems. For example, a dyslexic person may have no trouble spelling, but have terrible tracking problems when reading. And vice versa, another dyslexic person may have no visual problems, but be a terrible speller. OK, to sum up then, I really wouldn't worry about what type of dyslexia you have because at the end of the day it just doesn't matter. What is important is that you know what individual symptoms you have and how they personally affect you because at the end of the day having a clear understanding of how your dyslexia affects you is the first step towards beating it.